Ben Stiller watching Barry Z. Martin Scorsese watching Barry Z. I'm Ben Gazzara, you're watching the Barry Z Show. I'm Jennifer Tilly and you're watching the famous Barry Z. I'm Bernadette Peters and you're watching Barry Z. I'm Carol Channing, are you watching the Barry Z Show? Joe Iconis says that you're watching the Barry Z Show, which rocks. David Riggler of the New York Theater Barn, you're watching the Barry Z Show. Katie Thompson, you're watching the Barry Z Show. No bar else, you're watching the Barry Z Show. <laughs> Hi, it's Barry Z from the Barry Z Show, celebrating the New York Theatre Barn, right? With a fantastic benefit tonight, right? That's right. Oh, good shit. Tell me what happened, David. Talk to us. Give us the picture, yes? What happened is we had uh, two great sets by two amazing composers, uh, Brian Feinstein and, and Joe Iconis, uh, who just are, are people that we're going to continue on with and make really great work and make, a, make great theatre history. Great! And we'll be right back to give you a glimpse of all this right after these messages. Don't go anywhere, right? Yeah, that's right. Hi, it's Barry Z from the Barry Z Show, live from Times Square, talking to James Hetstrom has a great celebrity gossip site called TimesquareGossip.com, right? Come on, you guys, right after you're done with the Z, TimesquareGossip.com. Do it now, do it right after the show. So come to the TimesquareGossip.com. Hi, it's Barry Z from the Barry Z Show at the DR2 Theater, talking to Joe Barros, right? Yes, yes. That's right, sir. And David Riggler. How you doing? We're responsible for the NYTB New York Theater Bon. Tell me about it, what happened tonight? Well, we had uh, two different composers showcase their music, and then we featured two uh, different readings that we're producing next week. Now you emceed it, right? I am seated, it, like, unofficially. I just put everything together. I love bringing people together, and I love all, this, all these facts about everyone. I think it's very interesting. I've always loved it. I'm a Playbill.com junkie, and that's just how it is. How did the name come about? Uh, the name came about because of our relationship, you know, with meeting at uh, Summerstock Theater. And, and, I mean, actually, I've worked at three other barn theaters, and what I've... What I've come real bonds with cows... <laughs> And horses. Now stop gabbing and get me some oats. Real barns. I mean, literally, people, you know, the take, a barn. take. A, the theater is a barn, right. an old barn. I mean, a lot, a lot of these summer stock theaters, they just take a barn and they cut it in half and put a stage on one side and seats in the other. And I'm sure everyone in the theater uh, industry has has passed through one or several, and um, I, I have passed through four of them. You know, and I've and. It's so weird that uh, even today, and seeing other resumes and meeting people, I found that people have passed the same theater at the sa or the same experiences from 20, 30, 40 years before us. And so it's like that movie Summer Stock with Judy Garland. I guess, yeah, pretty much. My arms around you. That what's your you. arms are really for? That's wonderful too. That's wonderful too. So glad I found you. Looking around, I found there are no more you like you. You, you who, who remember finders, keepers, losers, weepers, and because it's true, you're So what are you doing? Recreating the old theater barn from the old days and bringing it here to New York? Well, what we're doing is, you know, is trying to rekindle those relationships, you know, in, in finding that we all have the same experiences. We're trying to reconnect those and get people to accept those and want to recreate those relationships with other people and seek them out and go back to their roots uh, and in doing that and, and coming coming together and whether it's uh, having the same experiences of being at Summerstock or uh, uh, the same college or the same hometown is to, to build up the community and and to move forward together and to give uh, artists a chance to develop new work 
and, and to really have strength in numbers, we don't really have to do this alone, that really we can be much more successful moving forward as a community and, and not so much as an individual, because it's, it's really impossible to do it alone. And, it's, and really we are a community, as you can see tonight with everybody who came out, and you know, it's a, we're, all, we're all connected. So what do we see tonight? Tell us, break it all down for us. Um, basically, we saw the first set was Brian Feinstein, who of course composed Mimi Leduc's Golf Broadway Show. Mimi Leduc with Eartha Kitt? Yes. Annie Golden. Annie Golden, which I was actually the associate set designer on. Oh my god, it's Joe Iconic! Yeah, yeah! Wow, what a show tonight. You blew them the fuck away. Now you listen to me, mister. God did not put me on this earth to be awakened by filthy suggestions from a foul-mouthed hooligan like you. Uh, and it was good. Yeah, it was a good show. I was very, very happy. A lot of people turned out. A lot of people I didn't know, which is nice. Are you the new Stephen Sondheim, Cander and Ebb, and Jonathan Lawson? I don't know. I have no. I have no idea. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to sort of do something that I think is is different from what other people are doing. I mean, I always just say that I. I just rip off from 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 people that the rest of musical theater writers don't rip off from. Tell me about the songs. Um, okay, so the songs... Uh, well, from the Black Suits? A, a, yeah, only a couple, like only like two or three are from the Black Suits. Most of them were just songs that songs that I wrote. Um, just kind of random, uh, random standalone it's songs. It's going to Broadway, the Black Suits? It's going, it's going to Off-Broadway, and then, then hopefully Broadway and the world. Oh. Yeah, it's going to Off-Broadway, though, but it's like, you know, for real Off-Broadway, not bullshit. Not bullshit Off-Broadway, for real Off-Broadway. For real? No shit. What songs were from the Black Suits? The, from the Black Suits, we had a uh, rock and roll band, Blue Hair, Joey's a punk rocker. My parents tell me I'm never gonna make it. Fuck you, Bob! Teachers tell me I'm never, ever, ever gonna fall. They say I'm dumb, I'm a bum, but I ain't worth shit. But that just proves to me that they don't even know me a bit. Cause if they did, they would see just how wrong, wrong, wrong they are. Scream and shout, knock you out. I'm gonna conquer the world, get the girl. I'm gonna get some respect to finally connect when I take a stand with my rocky roll band. Lord, I'm awesome, it's almost one. The internet's down and my homework's done. And I'm sick of brown and it looks like fun. So I'm gonna dye my hair blue. together in public my friends would scream and my mother would die and on top of that I want to ask him if he likes me or if he thinks I bite but no matter his reply I'll never take my eye off this different kind of Mr. Right dirty <laughs> and he paints his nails black <laughs> Um, but that was it. All the other ones were just songs that I uh, songs that I wrote. Uh, the song uh, about the lonely woman I wrote for my friend Lance just uh, two days ago. Hey, lonely woman, I want to tell you you're right. <laughs> and if it's cool with you, maybe I'll hang at your kitchen table tonight. No, I'm not kidding around. I'm not kidding around. I really, really want to. If you think it's cause of pity, you shouldn't If I didn't wanna be here, I wouldn't 
So you can tell your stories and be all weird I don't mind, I don't mind Talk about how cats and children disappeared I don't mind, I don't mind To see how pathetic you are It makes me feel better than I usually do Oh, lonely woman, I'm glad that I know you a day job? Um, I, I, not since the, I, I won an award that, that gave me a, a What kind of awards did you win? He was talking about that. He won $100,000. Whoa! I want that money! Yeah, that was really about 100000 That, yeah. Um, no, no, you cannot. But it's, uh, it's, 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 yeah, it was, it was an amazing gift. It is a gift. And it's, uh. Oh, from God? I uh, know it's from Ed, Ed Kleban, who's the, the dude who wrote uh, a chorus line. It's, a, it's, a, it's an award in his name. And um, yeah, it sort of allowed me for the past month or so to just, just write, and it's, it's going to be... You got an award from Daryl Roth. I did, yeah. I got the Daryl Roth Award with uh, Robert Maddock. How can they uh, ring you up? You can ring me up by going to my website, which is uh, www.mrjoeiconis.com. Uh, who is this lovely lady with the red hair? I'm Katie. Katie who? Katie Thompson. We met Katie because we saw a launch of a new theater company uh, a few months ago that our friends started. Ate. Ate. And Katie was performing. We were so blown away. We had to know her and we produced two of her cabarets. Um, she was part of our launch and her new cabaret, Red, which is actually practically a musical. We should talk about that because... It's about Rita Hayworth? No, it's about redheads taking over the world. She has a website as well. It's my name, katiethompson.com. But I have two CDs on iTunes, but I won't fuck you for them. Why the fuck not? Huh. How can I get them then? <laughs> you have Cash. to buy them. $10 a piece, honey.